Hi, I'm Fletcher Peters. And I'm Tori Powell. And you're watching DWC News. For our first story, we're throwing it back to the 90s. DWC member Luke Baker takes us to the American University campus to tell us more about the game that's catching the nation. I wanna be the very best. If this intro brings up intense feelings of nostalgia, then you probably already know what we're talking about. Pokemon Go has taken the world by storm. Students, faculty, and campers all over American University are excited to catch them all. We set out to learn about this new phenomenon. The game is a new augmented reality app produced by Nintendo, who have developed Pokemon games since the 90s. The app is on track to overtake Twitter and daily users, and has already been downloaded on more phones than Tender. But this fun comes with a warning. The National Safety Council has released a statement advising players to pay attention to their surroundings. Injuries and even some robberies have been reported. We talked to Trey Lyons, a camper at AU's Discover the World of Communications camp and an avid Pokemon Go player. Like, I would never go out and search for Pokemon late at night unless I was with, uh, like, a, a group of people. So Despite the danger, Pokemon Go has caused a lot of people to expand their comfort zone and inspired a new way to exercise. Exercise in general has been just like out of this world. Like I walked way more than I had in a long time in the span of like a couple days. Both physically and socially, the game seems to be doing a lot of good. It, it, it's made me socially a better person, like better, better at being social. Um, I think just it makes things so easy. You just see somebody and you're like, oh, what did you just catch? And like, just you, there's just so much stuff you can talk about. Um, but honestly, I would just say that it's, it's, not, uh, it's not all hype. And I don't think that it's going to be all hype. I think that it's going to progress and that they're going to come out with new things that make the game exciting and like interesting and new um, so that people like keep gaining interest. And I think it's going to be around for a long time. Nintendo stocks have risen 15.9% in the past week. And my Pokemon count just rose by one. I'm Luke Baker for DWC. Back to you guys. Thank you, Luke. And good luck to the estimated 9.5 million daily users trying to catch them all. For our next story, let's look at the new safe track system which has been in place since early June. Let's ride on over to Olivia Azulay to tell us more about it. Since June 4th, DC Metro has in place the new Safe Track safety system that will conduct a series of some of the most extensive work the Metro has ever seen. The year-long Metro Rail Rehabilitation Plan includes 15 safe surge projects and will mean the longest stretches of single tracking and station shutdowns the Metro has ever seen. Here I am with Daily Commuter Will. How has the Metro Safe Track affected you? Um, the Metro Safe Track affects me, uh, especially when I travel downtown is where some of the major closures have been happening and uh, trains are usually delayed a lot longer than they are supposed to be coming and uh, it's down to like one rail on most of the major uh, railroad tracks. So it's a lot harder to get uh, to and from downtown, it takes a lot longer. Um, it's definitely necessary to make sure that daily commuters have a more safe travel and I know it's going to take a lot longer than they said it would, but uh, if they're reassuring our safety, I'm all for it. Although the safe track is a huge inconvenience to riders, in the long run, it will be safer for them. I'm Olivia Azalea, back to you in the studios. Thanks, Olivia. This week, the safe track system will have continuous single track closures on the orange and silver lines from East Falls Church to Boston until July 31st. Metro Rail riders are encouraged to consider taking alternative routes while safety search work is taking place on their line. After a day on campus, it is clear how green the campus of American University is. Let's raise the roof with Kyla Jackson to see just how sustainable the college really is. Hello, I'm Kyla Jackson and I'm here at American University, which is a green campus. I'm going to talk with Mike Mastrada about how sustainable the American University campus is and how it affects the campus community. The rooftop gardens uh, benefit in many ways. One, you know, they certainly are more attractive than the average roof. Um, but they also help uh, reduce heating and cooling costs of the building because they add a layer of insulation to the building that wouldn't have otherwise. They also uh, help reduce the amount of storm water. So when it rains, water hits the roof of the building and instead of just going directly into a drain, it will go into the plant material, will soak it up and some of the, the soil there will help uh, reduce the amount of runoff from the site. 
AU is the college in D.C. with the most rooftop gardens. Machado gave us lots of input on how they keep up with all the square footage of greenery. We have our own uh, in-house ground staff and we divide the campus into five different zones and each zone has its own crew and they're responsible for maintaining that area of the campus. A big part of Machado's plan for the future is to be energy resourceful on the campus grounds. Recently our campus is now 50 percent or over 50 percent of the energy used here on campus comes from a sustainable renewable source. According to Mr. Machado, 60 percent of our AU students look for a green campus while applying for school. Reporting from DWC, I'm Kyla Jackson. Back to you guys in the studio. That sounds great, Kyla. One of American University's goals is to be carbon neutral by 2020. Here on campus, Gemma Romain took a closer look at diversity within Discover the World of Communications. These students that you are about to see found out just how international students' experiences differ from those of the states. Hi, I'm Gemma Romain. Here we are in front of the McKinley Building in Washington, D.C., home of the program DWC, Discover the World of Communication. Today, we'll be hunting down some international students to find out more about their experience here at American University. Let the quest begin. I met with the director of DWC, Sarah Mankey Fish, who was able to give me more clues as to where I could find more information. I believe the international students increase their English speaking skills and their confidence with speaking on camera in front of a group of people. I also think they have an opportunity to work as international film teams and have a chance to understand a little more about how American culture operates. With a little pondering around, we finally found a student all the way from Shanghai, China. I heard that about from one of my class teachers. He's from America and he's from DC. He got to know this program years ago. He told us and I found it's very interesting and that's the reason why I come here. Next, I got to talk to another DWC international member from Barcelona, Spain. In Barcelona there are not camps like this. So I I just wanted to do something before starting university to know how journalism is before I start. I have to say how impressed I am with DWC's international reach. Again, I'm Gemma Romain, reporting from American University, and as the Spanish would say, hasta luego, back to you. Thank you, Gemma. This year, 40 different states of the USA as well as 15 different countries were represented. So I guess you could say we really discovered the world. Hopefully after their time in Discover the World of Communications, there will be more students enrolling at American University in upcoming years. Speaking of enrollment, let's take a look at some of the changes that American University is making to their admissions process. Let's send it to Cam Seibert for more on the topic. Hi, I'm Cam Seibert, reporting live from American University. I recently met with the school's Associate Director of Admissions, Jeremy Lowe, to talk about why there has been a recent drop in admissions ratings over the past few years at American. Um, in the fall of 2014, the admit rate was uh, 46%. Uh, this year it was 26%, so we've seen a pretty drastic de decrease. And uh, I think uh, this question is kind of twofold because it, it looks better that the university is more selective and we're identifying students at a more competitive rate than we were before and uh, I think that kind of allows applicants to see that oh man AU is a, a, a difficult school to get into it's a competitive school but at the same time it also raises the issue of access you know we don't want to seem uh, 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 you know, we're not exclusively looking at a student's SAT or ACT scores or GPA. You know, AU did make a decision two years ago to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for all students we admit. Um, so regardless of your, your family's background, um, we, we aim to make it affordable for every student we offer admission to. And I think that does signal to students that, hey, this is a place that I can, uh, on the surface, afford if I am offered admission. But yeah, I think we're happy where we're at. And I think over the last few years, uh, the university has been very pleased with its decrease in admit rate. It seems like American University's admission staff is looking to make a positive change in the way the admissions process works here at the school. This has been Cam Cyber reporting live from DWC News. Back to you guys in the studio. It is reported that despite the popular myth among teens, colleges don't pay a lot of attention to social media when considering students, but instead look at more important factors. Thanks for the story, Cam. For our last story, we have Logan Russell reporting from the Boys and Girls Club in Georgetown. The Boys and Girls Club is a dedicated youth facility with activities, camps, and sports. 
I am leaving campus to go to the Boys and Girls Club located in Georgetown. Today I'll be learning about the benefits of the club and the opportunities that these kids gain from the club as well as the variety of programs that they have for kids of all ages. I enjoy working here. Um, I've been here at this club for about two, about two years, two and a half years. We do flag football, uh, kickball, basketball. We have another a person that's a, like that's a really like an artsy person. So you know she's doing you know, different art projects. Uh, like so today, I mean they did a whole bunch of painting and, and, and all that stuff. We have volunteers that come through. So like for instance today, uh, we have some volunteers, some high school students from ninth to twelfth grade. They came here from Fort Worth, Texas. So they're here today. They did like a field day this morning, um, and they also right now they're doing a, like a candy carnival. It's a place, it's a home away from home. They have friends here and they'll have friends that have been here, they've been friends for two, three, four summers. It's just more of a place of them being able to explore different opportunities. Um, you know, we have some kids that have never been to, you know, maybe a, a Nats game or something like that. So, you know, then we can give them the opportunity for them to go. In a season we were doing dodgeball. Um, I got the flag in under 30 seconds. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of myself for doing that. My friends, they are trustworthy. When I'm feeling down, they would come over to me, help me cheer, help me cheer up. The person I really look up to is um, my my um, teacher, Miss T. This is Logan Russell reporting to you live. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Logan. It looks like the Boys and Girls Club is a great place for children to have fun. And learn in a safe environment. I'm Tori Powell. And I'm Fletcher Peters. And you're watching DWC, DWC News. News.